If they asked me, I could write a book about the way you walk and whisper and look. Joining us now on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a woman who's uh, written a cookbook. She's had the previous bestseller called The Mom 100 Cookbook. Got a new one out now called Dinner Solved. 100 ingenious recipes that make the whole family happy, including you. We're joined today by Katie uh, Workman on the telephone. Katie, good to talk with you. How are you today? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good to have a chance to talk with her a couple of minutes. I think what you've done here, just kind of reading through it uh, in the book myself uh, a bit, you're, you're trying to alleviate some problems at the dinner table, particularly with mom, dad, and the kids having uh, agreement on the meals, right? <laughs> Exactly. You know, dinner time should not be the source of stress that it's become for so many of us. But, you know, we want to make something that we want to eat, the kids want to eat, and not feel like a short order cook running around making a bunch of different dishes. So all of the dishes in Dinner Solved have a fork in the road component, which means you can make the recipe up to a certain point, and then go in different directions. You can make one version vegetarian and one meat. You can make one spicy and one mild. You can make one with more, you know, flavors and additional things added in, more sophisticated, and keep some of the rest of it on the plain and simple side. So you're cooking one dinner, but everyone's getting the version of it that they really like. I think moms out there, maybe some dads who, who do the cooking as well, they'll, they'll be happy to hear that. Exactly. <laughs> I guess the biggest issue, though, and you know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, mom would serve dinner, and, and usually there was a vegetable, usually two vegetables, neither of which I really liked, but you, know, you eat it anyway. But uh, is that the biggest issue, dealing with you know, vegetables at the dinner table? That's what kids usually don't like, right? Vegetables is definitely a hot button for so many of us, and trying to get our kids to you know eat something beyond a, a baby carrot is, is uh, a raw baby carrot can be a challenge. <laughs> but I have a whole bunch of salads in here, tried and tested on my boys and all of their friends, and a bunch of other vegetables, uh, you know, vegetable dishes, side dishes, and, you know, lots of vegetables that are worked into soups and stews and chilies and things like that where sometimes kids are more willing to experiment when there's, you know, flavors and other things in there that they know they like. Yeah, that's going to key for me. You, you, eventually you don't like it, you just put it with a little bit of mashed potatoes or something and it takes the yes. taste away. <laughs> of the vegetable. Right. That's right. <laughs> so if you put well, it in a soup or something, you have a soup kind of, uh, the other flavors of the soup, uh, mask it. So that, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, so, and, you know, fish is another issue that you parents are always worrying about, how to cook fish simply at home, how to get their kids more interested in fish. And we have in this book, there's, I have a tilapia that's this great crusted tilapia that my kids love. My son, my younger son, when he first tasted it, he said, Mom, congratulations, you finally made a way to have fish taste like chicken. <laughs> so that was his big praise. And uh, there's a Caesar roasted salmon that they love and a prosciutto wrapped halibut which, um, you know, if you wrap something in a little bit of bacon, you're, you're already, you know, ahead of the game. Yeah, I think anything with bacon in it helps. It always <laughs> Flavor wise. Now, these recipes, uh, obviously, uh, you, you want everybody to kind of agree on it, but, but there's a time element, too. So a lot of these, I would imagine, are 30 minutes or less, that type of uh, time frame. Uh, yeah, right? there's lots of 30 minutes or less. And you know, all of the recipes are really easy. Um, most of them are quick. The ones that are longer don't involve more work on your part, necessarily. It just might be something braising, you know, these Spanish pot roast braises in the oven for a few hours. Or either you're making a a, a, a white bean and chicken chili that's going to simmer on the stove for half an hour. But none of it requires this kind of full-on maintenance. And a lot of them can be uh, saved for leftovers, too. That's, that's key, right? So you can have, a, yeah, have the absolutely. next day or the following day, right? Lots of things can be made ahead of time, and lots of things can be frozen. And then there's all sorts of tips for how to use up leftovers, like make an Asian rice bowl night with your leftover, you know, orange chicken and, and your Korean, you know, tofu and mushrooms. If you have a couple of those kinds of leftovers, you make a big pot of rice, put that out with a bunch of other, maybe some leftover cooked broccoli, maybe some sauces if you have some hoisin sauce or some chopped scallions, some peanuts. Let everyone assemble their own rice bowl because it's really nice when everyone can make, you know, like whether it's tacos or a rice bowl or a baked potato bar. When people get to customize their own meals, they really enjoy that. 
breakfast was a, a meal. I guess most people, pretty much everybody liked breakfast, but, but yeah, I know you have some recipes in here too for, for breakfast. They're kind of in that same vein. Everybody's going to enjoy it. Can you give an example or two? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the favorites in our house is the breakfast wraps, which consists of a slightly warm tortilla, just warm those tortillas in the microwave while you scramble up some eggs, and then put out some shredded cheese, some salsa, maybe some drained uh, black beans, chopped tomato, chopped onion, and let everyone just throw together their own little breakfast burrito and wrap it up and, you know, yours might have salsa and spinach and red onion in it and your kids might have cheddar cheese and tomatoes and everyone's happy. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. And when, when you put a, a book like this together, any previous books, uh, uh, and you want to come up with you know different angles on food, different uh, combinations, do, do you just kind of test them out in your own kitchen, or what, what's your process uh, for putting these together? Yeah, I definitely I test the recipes multiple times. Um, some of them you know could be tested three, four, or five, ten times, and certainly my family eats them. All my friends eat them, and then of course they have a final run through when we do the photo shoot because there's a photograph of every recipe in the book. And they're, that's you know done with a team of cooks, you know under my supervision, and that's the grand final test. Yeah, I think it's a fun household that you live in. I would imagine your, your family must <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> yes. How about desserts? Oh, it's pretty uh, good around here. I know you have uh, some recipes for different types of cookies and cake. Any ideas there you can give out? It's one of the all-time favorite cookies in the book in my house and also in my office because I brought them in yesterday was um, the chocolate brownie cookies. Mm. So they taste just like a brownie but they're in cookie form and if you want to you can make a peanut butter filling that is very easy and then layer that in there sandwich two of those cookies together and you have a chocolate peanut butter sandwich cookie. I think it's like bacon peanut butter you can't go wrong. That sounds great. Uh, right. <laughs> bacon, <laughs> chocolate, peanut butter I'm just going to keep repeating these magic words. <laughs> but those combinations uh, that's great chocolate and peanut butter. Well, it's really an interesting book, and again, I know people are looking to save time, uh, you know, people are working harder than before, more hours, so they want to have uh, more time, time at the dinner table and, and not take as much time cooking, and these uh, recipes uh, solve that problem. Hopefully they solve the uh, problem of uh, kids not eating. It's called Dinner Solved. We've been talking with Katie Workman today. Katie, give out your website. People can get in touch with you if they like. Yeah, absolutely. The website is themom100.com, and there's more information about the books, and that's how you can find me. Great. Katie, pleasure talking to you. Good to uh, have a chance to uh, chat with you, and we'll talk to you again, hopefully. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to dogmilesmedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at dogmilesmedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.